last few albums, did you sit down and talk to yourself and just refocus what you were doing? I really go in from project to project, uh, and I don't often take stock. Uh, I think that helps me make ghastly mistakes, which is really quite good. Um, I think if you don't make mistakes, you never really reach to the really high points and really good points. I think the reason that occasionally I come up with something that's really quite good is because I allow myself to make an absolute fool of myself. Also, I think people are okay about me making mistakes. That's what, which is even better, because now I've got a tried and true method of working. Uh, people, so I know, when I say people, I actually mean my, my core group of uh, audience, you know, who are really very loyal. We do a bunch of things from uh, different decades, going back, you know, 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s. I've consistently sold the same amount of albums for decades now. It's like they've really been there for me. Fear is a big part of this oh, record, absolutely. but it's a big part of a lot of stuff you've done. You know, fear is so important. Uh, the trouble with the Western ethic is that we're encouraged to uh, negate every kind of disappointment in our lives. We're told that fear and pain and all those things are things that we can overcome or avoid or kind of, you know, if we're, we're in touch with this kind of spiritual life, we won't ever have those things in our lives. And of course, I think they're terribly important. I think the pain uh, and the disappointments and all that are so much uh, a foundation of making us stronger as people, that I think we have to embrace them as much as we embrace happiness or the need for happiness. These are the nights. These are the darkest of Maybe I do dwell on those aspects of life quite a lot in my albums. They are darker, they are kind of... Uh, I'm not really that kind of guy at all, though. I'm, you know, I'm not Trent. You know, I, I'm really quite... I'm not that serious. I'm not that dark all the time. I'm actually quite a buoyant personality. But I think left to my own devices, that 2 a.m. moment in the early morning, um, all these questions and all that questioning comes into play. Never, should never be alone with yourself that It's much. kind of like that, yeah. My mind's a bad neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Waits popped into this interview. feel alone? Yeah. We all feel very alone, don't we? Often. Too often. That's why we make such a thing of trying to be with people and become social animals. It's very scary to know that uh, <coughs> those last moments will be absolutely alone. Uh, the other side of the coin is whatever questions you had about what happened will be answered shortly. That's right, so why bother posing them now? I mean, if, you know, I'll, Maybe I should be a Zen Buddhist, and then I can get rid of all that. Too much attention to detail. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it's very hard work being, having no mind. <laughs> when things work, I kind of want to leave them alone, because it's like point proved. It's like... If I do this and this, and I create this situation, and then it's accepted, then I find, well, okay, that's been validated. Uh, now I can move on. You're happy, things are going well, which means it's time to kill this puppy <laughs> and do something else. It does sound a bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah, interpretive dance, I thought. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, man. <laughs> next, that might be my next phase. <laughs> That's a perfect end. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> this is just my personal opinion, which I have to say, 
has been questionable in the past. But if I was you and I had um, to buy three new albums, I would buy one by the Doves called The Last Broadcast, and I would buy one by the Coral called The Coral, and I would buy one by Coldplay called A Rush of Blood to the Head. That's what I would do. And it just don't The same thing. Uh, about 13. 13. What'd you start off with? Start off with uh, Smooth Pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The regular in to yeah. drug usage, yeah. Yeah, it's weird though because by 15 I was shooting up drugs. And see, that does, that's not normal. No, it is. See, isn't. most people go like with 13 they might smoke a joint or mm -hmm. something and then, you know, maybe do some drinking and. Or, and maybe like, um, oh, I don't know, acid maybe some acid, yeah. some ecstasy, you know, mm -hmm. and they dabble in it. But for me, it was never a recreational thing. The minute I got high, I spent the rest of my life trying to get high. I'm definitely a candidate for, you know, rehab, sobriety, and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, I have to do that because... It's and your life is better now? Oh my god, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I'm not in jail. Things are looking up. Oh, the what same thing. Oh, I busted in a door in Philadelphia. Like, oh, do you think no. I'm going to lose it? No, that happened to my toe once. Yeah, but look at it underneath okay. that. What's going to happen there? Well, you well, see that? Don't pull your finger back. <laughs> Quit doing that. Yeah. Okay, I can't push it back to where it was. Ten years ago, you know, Nirvana was huge. Ten years later, right now, you know, NSYNC is on top of... Uh, the music world and Britney Spears and you know and how does it feel um, coming out with an album after so long every year or so there's a new band like that's sweeping the nation mm -hmm. so it doesn't feel like you don't I mean, think it, that the climate has changed in terms of yeah, but like, grunge and then right but remember the ska thing was happening for a while remember that when all, all the ska bands were big so it's, it seems like little things, you know. Mm -hmm. Remember, rap was a little bit, gangster rap was big, 92, mm -hmm. remember, right around, right around. Yeah, so, so things go in cycles, you're saying? No, just every year it's something different, really. We're gonna make the new album right now. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking, something like that. Three and go. So the shows that you've been playing recently in the past few months, what's the audience been like? The crowds who come out, are they, is it like reuniting with your old fans or are they new people who are meeting you for the first time? Um, I know that there's some old people that have been out there because like Amy Lighted from St. Louis.